Alex, so how does internet work on cruise ships? Well, obviously, cruise ships get pretty far from shore, so cellular to the towers on land is just not going to work. You know, unless you're sitting in harbor, so it's pretty much all satellite. And there are a couple different services. The one that I think is growing in popularity the fastest is the new Starlink service. The SpaceX satellites whizzing by overhead in low Earth orbit. There's a lot more of them than there is the other satellites.、Now. In fact, most satellites in orbit around Earth are Starlink satellites. So it's. More than any other service, it's more than every other service put together. So I know Starlink relies a lot on ground stations. How do cruise ships get Starlink when they're so far from a ground station? Right. Good point. So the way Starlink normally works is you talk to the satellite overhead, and it beams down to the nearest ground station, which is usually within you know, like 100 miles or something.、Mm-hmm. That doesn't work for ships.、So、now they've added lasers between the satellites. So from your ship, you talk to the satellite overhead, and it uses a laser. To talk to a satellite that's somewhere over the land, and it talks down to the internet. It works really well. Although the latencies are higher, right? On ships, I'm hearing it can get up to 99 milliseconds. Not bad for the middle of the ocean. That's fantastic for the middle of the ocean. So there's a lot of debate in our comments about why exactly Carnival wanted to take away Richard from the No Pants Profits YouTube channel's Starlink dish. So like, why don't cruises like you to have your own? Satellite modem on board. So I think there are a lot of reasons. I think number one, and you can't underestimate this, they want to make money. People start bringing their own dishes. They don't get to charge extra for the Wi-Fi. But ships operate under this complicated legal environment, right? If they get within 50 miles ashore, they now have to operate under the laws of that country. If they get further away, they have to operate under the laws of the country that they were registered with. And there are just so many rules, and there is complicated navigation equipment, and there are Starlink dishes they're using to provide internet to other people. Right, because there is some limit to the the bandwidth in one cell. Yes, I mean it's normally pretty high, but there is some limit, and I bet when you're in the middle of the ocean, it's lower. And if ten people put out their Starlinks, maybe now we're running into it. Could there be interference as well on top of hogging some of the bandwidth? There sure could be, although that's less of an issue than it used to be. I mean, it was true on airplanes in the '90s when the cell phones were super powerful. Any airplane that still had electronics from like 10 years earlier, the early '80s or whatever, the electronics weren't that shielded. So there was a moment when cell phones were new that they really could mess up an airplane in a dangerous way. And now, honestly, it's perfectly safe. There's no danger whatsoever. Yeah. So Carnival now prohibits. Starlink dishes, in addition to other satellite dishes and other internet devices, routers, satellite phones, but not ham radios. Why do you think that is? So Princess Cruises does ban ham radios, although there are lots of people online who said they they wrote a letter in saying I would like to use my ham equipment on my cruise, and they got special permission. I saw that. Yeah. I think they just want things tight and tidy, and so much easier. Just say no. And not have to worry about if this weird radio is going to interfere with, you know, the ship's equipment. If you say no, there's no problem. So I know Starlink is going to start rolling out direct to cell on cell phones, where regular mobile phones will be able to connect directly to Starlink satellites. Yep. Those will effectively be satellite phones. So do you think normal cell phones are going to start getting banned from cruises because of that? No, that I mean they just can't. They just can't. They can't take your cell phones. That would be crazy. Could you imagine the chaos? I mean, if they said no cell phones on the cruise, I mean, people would just find another cruise line, right? For sure. Yeah, that would be the end of that. But you know, that said, you can make a call, but this is not a service that's going to replace Verizon, replace T-Mobile. Probably won't even replace the on-ship calling network. But if you find yourself in a life raft, that satellite LTE could be the greatest service. In the history of the world, right? Yeah. Speaking of Starlink, a few people were asking how we were bonding to Starlinks in our last video with this thing. So, oh, this talk thing. A little more about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Miri router, Miri dot tech. This is just a fantastic new router. It has 5G. It has 4G. It has Wi-Fi. It has four Ethernet ports, two USB ports, and inside it, it runs Speedify. So you can plug in to multiple Starlinks. You can tether cell phones. You can put SIM cards in it, and either have it make a Wi-Fi hotspot or even join an existing Wi-Fi and maybe share to you out one of the Ethernet ports and use Speedify to bond them all together to give you this just rock-solid internet. 
and it uses the same batteries as the Sony cameras. So you can either plug it in or you can just pop in a battery and run it off that. So yeah, I had Verizon 5G and then I had two Starlinks plugged in and voila. I mean, the Starlinks, they're fantastic most of the time, but every once in a while the performance dips so low, it's a disaster. And then you know, I pop over and use the 5G and everything's totally cool. So this is, this is the fun new toy from uh, Miri. But you probably can't bring that on a cruise ship, right? No, I mean, the cruise ships, they're, you know, I'm hearing they're going through people's luggage looking for things with antennas and things that look with ra- like routers and taking them. So unfortunately, this is not going to work on your cruise ship because you're not going to manage to smuggle it on. But yeah, for you know an RV, for a news crew, anything like that, you need something kind of rugged. You need something that can work on batteries if there's no power, combining you know Starlink and cellular. I mean, this is kind of the ultimate solution. Very cool. If you want to know more about Speedify on routers, check out our other discussion video with Alex and our CTO, Brian Perdell, because they get into all the details about how you can put Speedify on your own router with OpenWRT.